come back. As you can see, today we have a new setup. And there's a lot of feedback coming out that I probably need to turn off. And we should be back to freaking normal. What is good, my G? How many setups have we had? Many setups. We've probably had like six. Here's the question. What was your favorite one? Probably table seating. The black table seating? Yeah, just because it's um, just any form of table seating. It, just because it's like, it feels like it's more engaging, especially when you have a guest, mm -hmm. right? To be able to talk to them back and forth is kind of like, it's different. It's like a dinner table, you know, going out to dinner. You feel like it's a different, it's always a different conversation. Yeah, right? that's a good point. Some of those, fi some of your favorite moments in life are just at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Like you're going out to eat with the boys or something. Yeah. Full squad around the dinner <laughs> like table. Yesterday. Like, come on. <laughs> yesterday was funny. We had um, one of our boys' birthday and uh, me and Zay showed up. So we, we were eating and everything. After we were done, there's obviously the bar seating in the middle of the restaurant. And then right around it is all the dining. Um, <clears throat> so we were finished eating. We were walking down to go valet our cars, get them back. And suddenly I see like Ibs, bro. His, his <laughs> Someone just reaches out for him. And he's like, what? hello, excuse me. And she's like, hey, do you have like five minutes? And he's like, uh, why? Like immediately. This like, was at the valet? Yeah, this was, no, no. This was like in the, in the restaurant. Oh. And clearly this woman was drunk. <laughs> like, oh like she was gone. It, the reason why we were like, what the hell? It's because it was, what time was it? It's probably like four what? or five o'clock. Yeah, she was probably like 5 a.m. type of drunk. <laughs> um. So it didn't match the scene. And then he was just like, oh, I'm sorry. No, I don't have time. I, I got to get out of here. And then. Uh, Ibs being know, Ibs. Yeah, yeah. She, she still held on to him. That was a problem. So he didn't want to like touch her and be like, get off of me. Catch a case. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he just respectfully waited for one of uh, like, I guess her friends to come over and uh, say, hey, you're fine. Just get out of here. She's too drunk, you know. So he didn't even know what she wanted. No, like it was just like a, she just held on to him. That was the problem. Can I just have five minutes of your time? And I'm like, what? Crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, but that, that place was like super mid. Dude. Average ass food. I mean, look, their meat was good, but it's just like, was it worth 30 bucks? 37 bucks? Everything Not was dry. Really. It, was it was just, just carne like asada. Done well. Great. You can get that anywhere almost. Um, I was... So over the weekend, uh, there's been something that's like uh, disrupting my mind, right? It's disturbing. And it has to do with game shows. <laughs> okay. Okay. So there was this Japanese game show in the 90s. Um, I do not recall what it's called, dude. I didn't even prepare for this. I just was hearing about this over a YouTube um, video. Mm -hmm. And the way it was des described was just like, how did anyone get away with this? Anyway, fast forward. In the middle of the video, it's a game show. This guy basically signed up for a grand prize. He didn't know he was going to sign his basically his life away and he's going to be tortured for God knows how long, right? But essentially what happened in between is this game show took him, made him sign on a bunch of things and told him that there's a grand prize which includes cash, and that cash is going to help you, you know, get out of the rut that you're in, the class that you're in, and you're going to be able to make yourself and your family live. Sounds familiar to me. Mm -hmm. So remember, this is back in the 90s, so you could probably picture the footage. But uh, essentially, this guy's life was being like live broadcasted every single night for more than 335 days. So more than a couple of years, actually, it turns out. Here's the interesting part. So they put him in an empty room. You know, there's maybe the floor to sleep on, a couple little items here and there. But think of not even food. They would feed him like water or things or maybe drugs here and there so he wouldn't die. But essentially the goal was to enter sweepstakes for this, for like in the country of Japan. And he would have to pay his way out through these sweepstakes. So he's basically working 24-7 mm. in this blank room. 
Now, every milestone, there are like rewards. Like you get a container of rice to eat. And he would cry, dude. They like they were broadcasting. He would just be crying, eating this rice. But not that's not why he's crying. You think he's crying because of the rice. Well, did you think of how he's gonna cook the rice? Mm -mm, he doesn't have any supplies. So he had to figure out for like a week how to cook this rice that he won. So he could just eat it. it okay, it's getting to that degree. And uh I have so many questions, yeah. but I'm not gonna ask. So them right the now. the documenting of this was the horrendous part because it was just like Yes, he was like maybe smiling in the moment or whatever because he solved like a piece of the puzzle. Uh, he was able to continue on. But what is he receiving at the end of the day? Dude, nothing. Like horrendous like uh, treatment. And people would think, you know, when I said torture, that it would just be like they're whipping him to death. No. Like waterboarding. Him no, no, they're not doing any of that. They're just, it's more like mental torture. They're uh, creating another reality for him pretty, pretty much and torturing him through that. Uh, so yeah, they, they took advantage of that show and its success because 335 days later, they were like, congratulations, you basically, uh, won your way out. And it was, there was like a series of things that happened throughout that. So think of more events like the rice incident. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting a pillow. It's just crazy. And his hair is growing. His beard is growing. He can't trim, can't shower, can't do any of this stuff. Um, and against his will. So at the beginning of the production, apparently, they were providing him with some sort of things. And then through the middle of it, it was... Uh, the production was making more money not doing that. They're, like, torturing him more. Oh, so they're incentivized yeah. to just torture him. And this, dude, this... When it aired, 3 million plus people across the nation... We're watching it. Okay, this is in Japan. So it started airing and getting a lot of money and traction, that show. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They said, congratulations, you you finally like made it out. He finally, like after 335 days, made enough money. I forgot how much money it was, but I would think it was like 10,000 yen or something through sweepstakes, mm -hmm. which according to a bunch of analysts would take years, right? If you were making little tiny amounts of money through sweepstakes that's nothing dude yeah. imagine making all these surveys taking all this crap it's just it seems damn near impossible but he pulled it off smart pulled it off took some time 335 days got out now the production was making so much money that they said no we're gonna keep this going so they they uh took him to an airplane they were like all right we're gonna fly you back home they flew him to korea why is this sounding like Squid yeah, Games to me? There's no, yeah, there's no, there's no way back. You have to pay your way back. So we're going to put you in another room. We're going to set you up. And now we're going to live broadcast you for season two, basically. And this is like the real life Truman show with Jim Carrey as well. But like, before we get there. Yeah. They were like, you need a business class uh, ticket. That's your, that's your only way out of here. So you're going to work your sweepstakes up to that point. Oh God. So I guess at this point, it took him even less than the 300 days. Okay, it took him maybe a couple months. And uh, he surprised everybody about how, how much smarter he's gotten and how much efficient he's gotten in the way he thinks and all this stuff, right? Um, he got through his goals even quicker. So he was able to have food and things like that quick. Ingenuity, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he, he's a human rat. He's an experiment, basically. Called a game show. And it's just live broadcasted. And it's basically, think of the dark web. Like when you just go into like a broadcast and you just see someone like, People typing like what to do, torture him, this, that. It kind and of he like signed that. up for this? He signed up for this, for the grand prize. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much details about this, but it's just, it was surprising to me, like the, the whole story and how it's not so popping. But um, I thought you were messing with no, me. No, like, no. Genuinely, no, I thought I you were swear just to God. rattling off like the first episode of Squid Games. No, no, I swear to God, but... Anyway, there's there's a documentary on this and there's actual uh, game show like footage of the guy, mm. right? But uh, so business class ticket, that's the goal, correct? He gets there in a short span of time and everybody's like, wow, he's a, this guy's a smart guy, you know, crazy. Except they get there and the producer's not happy. So he's like, now nah, we're going to keep this going. He's like, business class is not enough at this point. So are you going to need a first class ticket if you want to go back to <laughs> Japan, right? To go back to your family and win this prize. So he did it. Lo and behold, even shorter time, 
got to that ticket, Mm -hmm. flew home. Everything was great. But think about that show for a second, how much money it made through. Like you can almost see where the moral compass was heading, right? South. Down the drain, like, yeah, no care whatsoever. And it, it, it was insane that it was documented every single day. And you could see this guy's emotions, apparently. And his outbreaks and his panics and his happy times and his idiot times. Like he's he's almost turning uh, retardedly smart. You get me? Because he doesn't have the means to be a normal human being to function. It's survival at, the, at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to such a low point to be the most uh, utmost out of the box genius. I mean, and it's all through you know, torture. It's basically through torture. Like, yeah. And if that doesn't sound like the American system to you, I don't know. <laughs> if that doesn't sound like the IRS, I don't know what does. <laughs> you know, they hired 87,000 new agents. Are you serious? 87,000. I thought they lost like 70,000. They, they did lose some though. No, they've, they've, been, they've been adding. They've been adding. Yeah. And, and that has to be due to a loss. There's no way. Because apparently we need to jip, you know, the average $34,000 a year salary even more. And then just allow these big wigs to uh, find loopholes in the system. Dude, if and, the salary, if the average salary is 34, there's no way. I don't know what the average salary in the U.S. is. It's probably like 43, maybe 34. But I, I think I do know that $35,000 a year is top 1% in the world. Hmm. Most people globally don't earn shit. Compared to everyone in the U.S., mm. which is pretty crazy to think about. It is. Uh, I was shocked when I found out about Spain, right? What about Spain? The communist. Basically, like... Are they? Are they communist? No, I don't know. They're not communist. Yeah, they are communist. Socialists? No, they're not socialist. Anyways. Dude, am I tripping right now? <laughs> Are you thinking of a different country? No, no, no. So they all get paid the same. So government helps you. They aid with getting work. Um, oh, really? Yeah. For the most part. So if you look at it, look at their lifestyle. Uh, the way I examined it was that they do have leisure time pretty much every single day of the week. Hmm. So societal levels are, are insanely leisurely. Like they're just free after 4 p.m. Pretty much. Barely any, any poverty or any, anything like that? Barely any poverty. And if you find it, it's much different than here. Yeah. I mean, people bring up that argument a lot. But then again, what is the average population of Spain? It isn't even comparable to the United States. Like we're dealing with 375 million about. Mm-hmm. Well, besides population, I would go for priorities. Like what a, every, like our nation's priorities are not. Yeah. aligned with theirs yeah. at all like they 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 prioritize like family time over work right and the government does that for you you mm-hmm. get me like they understand that so they kind of tell you you know siesta why is why does <laughs> why does spain siesta in the middle of the day which is like a midday nap it's a national nap a national nap i swear <laughs> all right everybody get ready for your national nap time all right, guys. And before we get into why we are sponsored by Squarespace, we're going to take a <laughs> siesta real quick. <laughs> I'm kidding. But um, it's it's fascinating when you're yeah. there and you experience it and you're like, wow, everyone was just out. Why is everyone out? Like everyone's indoors now. Like no one's on the streets anymore. What's going on? And you're like, oh, OK. You start going back to like the villagey home areas and you're like, ah, everybody's cooking or sleeping or just with their family right now. Mm hmm. And then they continue doing their leisurely things after work, which is after 12, basically. Um, immediately. So their focus in life is like, what am I doing with my day? Not what am I doing at work? Yeah. Isn't they don't insane? fantasize about work like everybody in the no, US. No, no, not at all. So I can see why, um, you know, big, beautiful drapes in the wind with the sun shining into your balcony and stallions Spain. riding down the beach just makes sense. Right. It, that's the vibe. That's the vibe because we live for leisure there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just points to like, I mean, bringing up the IRS and everything, just how inefficient all of our systems are. Mm-hmm. Like everything from the metro stations <sighs> like in most my money. states to the DMV. Yeah. My money is supposed to help these things. And make the process quicker and easier. And system and order are great, right? They're great if they work. Yeah. But they're not working. 
No, not at all. So what do, you know? Yeah. That's what I'm starting to think. I'm like, what happened to logic? You know, that guy was here last year. <laughs> He's gone, bro. <laughs> rip, rip think, logic, bro. I think the majority of it just comes down to corruption, really. Hmm. I mean, maybe not all of it, but like, because when you think about it, you can't have blatant, it's it's either corruption or it's just blatant inefficiency, like just not thinking about how we should structure this system in general. Yeah. Or maybe we need presidents and authorities that are not, you know, stuck on the 53 cent hamburger times. <laughs> like this isn't the start of McDonald's, bro. Like this is, it's been the United States of America. It has changed. And it's kind of like, you know, when you, I know anyone that like becomes an engineer, they start working for a company, right? Mechanical, civil, whatever. And you get to see like the people that have been there for like 30 years, right? 40 years. And you're, you, you usually report to them or uh, they come down and like, you know, approve things or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be, you start, sometimes you're like, there's an efficient way to design this, for example, or to. Um, create this or to come out of this, you know, and it would save us so much time, but we would just put in a lot of energy right now. Right. And then the higher up would be like, does not see it at all. Just doesn't want to see it. Doesn't want to learn the new method. Doesn't care. Right. Yeah. So in that scenario, that guy, the higher up, just because he's more experienced, doesn't mean he has the better option. It really doesn't sometimes. Mm -mm. I've seen that happen, right? And people are so passionately, they're so into why they believe they are right, you know? And they're usually like on the younger spectrum, you know, under 30. And they're battling a guy that's been in the in the game for like 40 years, right? But that hasn't really updated his uh, logic with the new technology in a sense. I think that's a fantastic point because if you take a look at people who are very experienced within one domain... A lot of times they get stagnant because they are, they just spend all of their time within that one area. So they can't view that one specific area with a fresh pair of eyes. Mm -hmm. Whereas the other people who aren't in it can see like, oh, there's an inefficiency here. There's, you can improve this. You can do that, do that. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can take away from just being a beginner. Yeah. It's, it's like, it's not. I don't we need know. to get new it's, stands, by the way. These things, are yeah, annoying. these things suck, dude. We, that's why we need a, a new table. I'd rather get arms. Yeah, but anyway, uh, going back to that, it, it's like, do you want to respect them and their decisions and ideas and plans, right? Because you respect the fact that they've been doing this, but at the same time, I think they need to understand as well that don't block off like the idea. Don't be like, oh, I'm not going to listen to this guy because he's only been here for two years. Yeah, that's dumb. It's dumb as hell because you can always learn from many things, right? You could be, I don't know, doing something completely opposite of engineering and it'll teach you something about engineering somehow, mm -hmm. right? It's just because it's like you experienced something new or you just had your, your brain straight for a second. You were open to things. Yeah. Uh, so this thought all came from me initially thinking, how can I, how can I listen more, you know? And listening is interesting because you can choose not to listen with while listening. Have you done that? You've done that in class probably, you know, back in the day. Well, it's the difference between passive and active listening, right? Mm -hmm. so passive listen is just like, it's like background noise, like lo-fi in the background while you're focusing on something else. Yeah, but do you know why that happens? Think about this. This usually happens when someone you dislike starts talking. You're just not interested. You're not interested immediately. Yeah. Right? There's this thing where you have control over and it's it's inside of you and you kind of you kind of pick at it right it when someone you dislike starts talking this thing in your head just goes oh here we go like and you're immediately like there's nothing here for me to take you already are going into listening with that uh logic mm -hmm. so you've you've already kind of stopped the action of listening you're not actively listening. You don't care. And there's nothing to take out of this. Well, who told you that? There is something you, to take out of it. Yeah. There's, there's something to take out of everything. 
right? So start listening and take everything as pieces of information. Like imagine a scenario when some, somebody you don't necessarily like comes up and starts a conversation with you. You can view it from the perspective of like just totally shutting it off or you can think about it like this. In, like, in your head, you can be like, what is it about this person's mindset that has them incapable of taking the hint mm -hmm. of like, I'm not interested in this conversation. What is it about his specific like perspective or character that leads him to that path? Yeah. What is missing in his life that he needs to, you know, I don't know. We don't know. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's so funny because you got to realize that everything you learn can essentially help you. You're like, you're, you're benefiting regardless, right? Yeah. You're benefiting why he's acting this way. You're benefiting on your, the expansion of your guiding thoughts, your leading thoughts when you have, right? When you wake up in the morning, what is your first thought? That's your leading thought, right? You can practice having great leading thoughts. And that's the difference between me waking up great and me waking up terrible. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, how do you wake up in a good mood? Like, how do you wake up and just like, you're already working? <laughs> like, because work used to be designed in my head as this like black hole. I haven't stopped doing the same thing, but it's just, it used to be like, oh my God, dude, I just want to sleep. Another day. Another day, bro. I can't wait to just watch TV. Like, oh, let me just get through this. And that's, that's the wrong type of mentality. That's what it was. When did I start changing? It's when I started listening, to be honest. It's actively listening and it's being like, I know I can't maybe take much out of anything this guy says, but let me scavenge. Let me scout. Like, what's going on? Like, we don't just scout for cool views, right? We scout for like cool places to, you know, cool places in our mind. Like we want to be in a cool place at all times. Yeah. And I think it just starts with like listening. You pay attention to how you're listening. Are you truly listening? Or are you just looking for the noise? Mm -hmm. uh, half, <laughs> what was that podcast we were listening to today? Oh, bro. Off the charts, what was it called? Oh no, you really want me to bring this up right now? I, no, 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 I just want to. Are you talking about the No Filter podcast? Yeah, No Filter podcast. Bro. If you want to listen to something and really test out, like... <laughs> test your emotional maturity for sure. Yeah, test your emotional maturity and then test your um, your follow along, like the following of, along of thoughts. Following a train of thought that is other than yours, right? Try that. That is the hardest thing I've ever had to do is follow what they were trying to say. And I'm like, are like, they even saying anything? These guys fall into the category of, I guess, the, the typical alpha podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, think of like three jocks <laughs> who really don't have that much mental power behind them. Mm -hmm. And like, if you're an intelligent person watching their podcast or listening to it, you quite literally lose brain cells trying to do so. Yeah. But I, to sit there and try to like understand their, the fragment of logic that exists in the conversation, mm -hmm. that's, um, it's a good test. It's mm -hmm. a good test for people. What is it called? Off the charts. What? The no filter podcast. The no filter podcast. <laughs> it's just they're trying to come off with this persona of like yeah i, I don't know <laughs> it's it's too funny because it's like they're just sitting there and and essentially cussing they're just cursing right and and they get nowhere it's just like yeah let me tell let me tell you something let me tell you something real quick okay the reason why your bitch didn't stay is because is because no 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 hear me out the balance of our energies never reached the sky ultimately enough to align with her beliefs. Listen, dude, that is a so, skill of stupidity. <laughs> that is the art of saying nothing while saying everything at the same time. That is what that is. Subtly, subtly we have a podcast, but like, <laughs> you get me? It's uh, And it's, dude, it's why I appreciate this podcast because we're not the smartest cookies in the world. We're not the most experienced. But guess what? We like to talk about them. We can form complete sentences. Yes, we can. We can think about what we're saying and determine whether or not it makes sense to the audience. Yes, we can. And we have some sick guests we that want some, to be on here. We do have some sick guests too. Yes, sir. Um, 
but yeah, that's uh, ultimately <laughs> kind of the, like the vibe for today. Dude, remember the, that fact I brought up to you? Which one? About flies. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> you have to do this, yeah, dude. dude. So uh, I, I brought up a fact I, to him. Well, tell them the fact. They probably don't even well, know. Well, here, here's the thing. I still don't. I haven't searched it up. I don't know if this is true. I searched true. it up. It is true. But my girl told me about this. And she was like, <laughs> did you know that every time flies land, they vomit on whatever they land to spread their eggs or something like that? <laughs> I told this to you. And immediately my reaction is exactly this. <laughs> it's just <laughs> imagine imagine the perspective of a fly right you're just buzzing around you're <laughs> just fly everywhere away. just fly away how many times do you see a fly in your kitchen and it just lands on your apple and you're like hey get out of here and then it's just nothing do you think about what it did that it just Sharded shat. <laughs> Sharded shat. <laughs> and vomited all over your apple. In an attempt to procreate. Yeah. I don't know what that is, bro, but flies? I've killed at least 20 this yeah. week. Flies Flies are weird. I don't like them. I don't think anyone likes them. They're tricky, dude. Mm -hmm. They're very tricky. You have to you have to be completely in the moment in order to kill a fly. Whether it's a fly swatter, a magazine. Every like, time I think about killing a fly, I think of Bruce Lee. Oh, where he like catches one with his finger or something? I don't know, but it's just like one this, finger, no, this just thing that I've always like thought of when I was a kid. I met it might have been because he's done something with a with a, a fly. I think he has a video where he like catches a fly with his hands or something. Mm. Some crazy shit. Or maybe it was the three ninjas. It wasn't Bruce Lee. It was just the three ninjas. What are the three I think ninjas? the grandfather was teaching them like martial arts. And then he got, what was it? Was it that or was it the karate kid? Dude, I don't even remember anymore. It's all it of them. One of those karate movies, the grandfather grabbed a fly with um, chopsticks. Oh, yeah. I'd like that to see was someone impressive. try to replicate yeah. that. That was impressive. But, um, yeah, be water, my friend. Be water. <laughs> be water. Be not like fly. Mm -mm. Be, be like wasp. Never be like fly. Sting, don't buzz. Damn, <laughs> I can no. make my own fucking haiku right One now. of my favorite videos of all time is the... Uh, Oh, brand new Air Force Quam. <laughs> the freaking, <laughs> the freaking uh, Asian guy. Was that a TikTok video? He's like, oh, so beautiful. It was a TikTok video. Yeah. He's like, oh, check out the Air Force Quam. Air Force Quam. Air Force Quam. That shit's funny. Yeah, it was pretty pretty funny. Um, but yes, uh, going back to that whole freaking, what was I saying, grandfather stuff? I don't even know. The, the freaking main point of everything before we even got here was what the hell were we even talking oh, about? Oh, learning to I don't know, take a lesson from every experience? E, no, no. It was before that. That's too far. Yeah. But it's too far. Whatever. I was, try, so I was trying to tie ways. it, but every time you bring up random things, I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. It's the beauty of the podcast. But isn't it funny that I walked in here with a tub of red vines today? Back on red vines. I judge the hell out of you. I hate this mic so much. Why would you judge me? Yeah, I can't wait for the day until like we're able to have stands that just don't move or yeah. at least swivel to where well, it's perfect. We are. We are. We'll get there soon. Yeah, we just need the help of our listeners here. What is it about red vines that you like so much? I mean, they're good. I'm not going to lie. You know, they've always been like this uh, reward type of candy. Isn't all candy reward type of candy? No. Some candies you just eat with handfuls. This is the type to grab one by one. It's a tub. And I remember like, I don't know, third through sixth grade, getting that red vine at the end of the week for like submitting like excess homework or whatever. <sighs> Oof, bro, you felt like you were ahead of the curve and you're like, <clears throat> so it was just pleasing, you know? And then pizza parties, especially when they were like, all right, here's some red vines for you guys. Pass them down. And we're like, yes. And you get the tub and you grab two instead of one. Okay, here's a question. They're just It's just been that candy my entire life. Is there a difference between Twizzlers and Red Vines? Oh, hell yeah. Red what Vines are OG. Red Vines are OG. Okay. And it's more licorice-y. Licorice-y? Mm -hmm. is Twizzler is more like traditional candy. Just very fruity. Think of strawberry. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This is more like, just think of. We're looking at the red vine. 
You know how there's the there's like juicy fruit. Yeah, we are looking at the. T- We're like, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just sitting there, it's just in sitting there. It just looks so good. But uh, Relax, like bro. juicy fruit, juicy fruit's a gum, right? Yeah. And then there's like a bland gum called big red, just cinnamon. Okay. Okay. That one's more basic. This one's just more so extravagant. It, it just comes down to the fact that red vines have more of a. They live true to the licorice. To the base. Yeah, to the like, licorice. Uh, you know. Genetic pool, whatever you want to call it. Next up on the uh, podcast, we'll actually tour a red vine factory. I'm down. And get to see the history of licorice. If you guys want to see that, stay tuned tonight at night. No, okay. <laughs> but uh, no, for real. Um, the episode we had with Tamara was pretty interesting. I was surprised by how long that episode was. It yeah, didn't man, feel that was like a great, two hours. That was a great episode. Did not feel like two hours. And the fact that she was able to laugh too. It was perfect. That was like our vibe. We knew that was going to happen too. Yeah. She's just that type of person. But. Super grounded. It's the the freaking. There were some parts, like the feminine part, where I wish I said something more. Like what? Let's talk about it. Like what? You want to talk about it? Yeah. <laughs> well, it has to do with roles. It really has to do with roles. And I, I just want to talk about this, like, just me talking to you right now. Are you referring to fat roles or no, gender roles? No, 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 roles? no. No, just gender roles. Like, n- <laughs> one of my friends brought up a very good point, And it was something that I was feeling on the inside. And it's like, I've only talked to, like, a couple people about. And none of them were women, obviously. But essentially, go to the gym these days. What is the feeling you get when you go to the gym? Do you have a specific feeling that you get? Are you pumped? Do you feel like you want to get out of there? I feel like I want to get out of there. I feel like everyone's staring at me at the gym. It's not like social anxiety, but it's just like, I'd rather not be stared at. Rather just, if I'm going to train and I'm going to train properly, it always like, I feel like it has to be this dark dungeon where I'm just alone, separate from the entire world. I don't want to be around Jim Bob over here doing his fucking squat rack or, you know, Nancy doing her, her lat pull down. Like, I, I, I'm not interested in being around that. Yeah. I'd rather be alone and just focus purely on the the reps, the, the intention behind training, so forth. Yeah. So when I go to a, when I get hit up to do a film, a short film, whatever, I have this thing where after a while I started getting sick of seeing like amateur um, setups, amateur things. I feel like I belong in a higher playing field, right? When you go to the gym these days, it feels like that. It feels like you, it's not your it's not your spot. It's not your place. Um, everyone is in here because they deleted Tinder, and if they're not in here, they're on Tinder. <laughs> That's literally what it feels like. Really? I swear. Uh, I mean, I, I've had, you know, multiple friends at the gym, you know, a lot of them were like good looking males, for example, and they were, they've been doing this for years and years and years. And they, they've shared their experiences of what it's been like to hit the gym for the past 10 years and what has changed. And a lot of them have stopped going to the gym until they found a more expensive, exclusive VIP one where it's just them and the equipment at that point. Mm -hmm. You get me? And the thing is that I wanted to bring up is women in fitness. Oh, okay. We're going down that route. Something about that seems very off to me. Right? Because of the one thing that we know is easy to get males with. It's showing off your goods. <laughs> showing off your goods. Right? Okay. So when you show off your goods, 80% of male are already looking. The gym is a place for that. It's a display. It's like the red light district at this point where you go to every machine and it's just lit up perfectly for your muscles to appear. But you know what? It's also a spotlight for these human individuals that are standing there you know, showing off cake, doing all this kind of stuff. And we call it, you know, fitness. Well, what are you suggesting? 
I'm not suggesting it's anything. The alternative. I'm just talking about this. I this is something that I've been like just witnessing and noticing. And is these are these are feelings that are or thoughts that are derived from feelings that I get. Like something is truly wrong. Something is truly wrong with the way everything is. Because when I used to go um to the gym with my dad back in the day, right? I was like 16, 15. And it was Bally Total Fitness back then. Old school. Mm-hmm. 24 LA Fitness. Old school um, companies. They would, I remember, bro, 90% dominant male. If you saw ladies, they were older. Much older. Yeah, that is interesting. Hmm. And it was about the... The environment. It was about the community behind working out. You get me? Everybody was in there like a player. You know, everybody's like, oh, hey, Jim. Hey, John. Hey, blah, blah, blah. And everybody just knows everybody. And everybody's just there for their own best interest. Right. Mm-hmm. And to help and socialize and do all kinds of things. Right. But visually speaking, it was dominant male. Sure. Okay. Look at today. Like I walk into my gym. I have three gym memberships, three different gyms. <laughs> you walk in and you're like, okay, everything's filled up. I'm trying to find a, like a squat rack. Everything's filled up. Great. And then I started noticing everything's filled up again next week, but it's filled up. And I'm like, but it's all women. Hmm. Like I'm here to build testosterone, do the things that I need to do urgently right because my my body needs to exert that it needs to do that right as a man you should be doing that and it's something that once you get used to it it becomes you right because you've seen what low t levels do correct yeah detrimental low t levels so what do you do you start becoming this like this male specimen that is going back to your roots of basically hunting moving running doing all these kinds of things and that's the gym so when I when I go to the, go to the gym and I see someone just like doing gluteus maximus <laughs> all day right up in okay, your face, I have no respect for that. But why? I think it's a good thing. I think it is a good thing. But at the same time, what I'm saying is that true like masculine PE weightlifting back in high school type of energy is gone. Is the whole point. It's just harder to find. I wouldn't say it's gone. Why should it be hard to find? I'm going to the the spot, you know? Mm-hmm. The different. gym was the spot. Yeah. Like, what, what am I doing now? Now I got to find a jujitsu class. And I walk in there and there's still a chick trampling you. And you're like, you so, know? So you're speaking more along the lines of- What's happening? Why? What's happening? And why is it, I feel like it's all, it's all for show. Well, it is, because if you think about it, everyone in the gym comes down to two core reasons. You're either signaling your status within the hierarchy, or you're trying to attract a mate. Mm -hmm. Building muscle is a way of signaling your status. You see yourself as this hardworking guy who's, you know, built physique, and there's a reason for that. My question is, are men disappearing, or are we just getting more women in? I feel like men are disappearing. Just getting more women in, and I think this is this is probably very calculated based off of the uh, the gym companies. Like women are, there's probably more women than men around, right? So in order to to cater to a bigger audience, mm-hmm. you're going to cater to women. Zumba classes, cycling classes, um, a whole bunch of other stuff. Now, no problem with that, of course. I think it's it's just a matter of like you have to find the right location for you. Smaller box gyms primarily with men if that's a real distraction for the individual yeah but does that look what i'm saying is if it drives the man out of the gym and now it's it's woman dominant female dominant wouldn't you say that's bad like think about it bro if i'm waiting for machines for like 20 30 minutes and i'm just being dragged out of the gym just because of like like i got no time we're just Mm -hmm. i'm not gonna be sitting here waiting for this crap you know what i mean and seemingly that it's every gym now, it's like, dude, I just, I'm trying to find my spot at this point. I really am. Uh, I go, I don't know. 
it, it's getting to the point where it's just like it's still populated, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's it's, why I don't like that environment. Yeah, at this point. And then working out at home is it the same? So you seek it outwards, and then you seek it out, and you're like, "Damn it, I want to go back home." <laughs> well, that's why, like a full on gym it's, setup at yeah. home is is ideal. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg style. <sighs> yeah, I don't think it's bad. I think it's just the result of an inverted culture. You have a lot of you had you have a lot more chicks who are like starting to get into bodybuilding or like building a physique. Which, by the way, nothing wrong with it. There is nothing just, wrong with it, but I always have this fear of the the genders being reversed, like the roles. Well, that's been happening for decades now. Mm -hmm. So think of your physiognomy and your physiology and all this stuff. And it's. Yeah, I don't think we go like either way, know. like this way or that way. We're just like discussing the topic in general. It is an interesting observation. And I do agree with you on, uh, on a lot of it. It's an observation. All right. And if people get offended by observations, it's kind of like, what the hell? But it's true. There's something happening. And I don't think it's for the better. I think it's for the worse. Because like, like I said, if you start actively avoiding the gym because of reasons like that, and it's still being populated regardless, what's left for men? Like what, you, you get me? It's, it's like, for the longest time I can remember, Hot Wheels was for guys. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now are we gonna fucking tell women not to start driving? No, that makes no sense. But I am naturally gonna be more into it. Right out of the box, you know? You know what it reminds me of? Like if you go to a Nordstrom rack, Mm -hmm. which is the majority of the places just for, for women's clothing and stuff. I think it's kind of like that. So I can see where you're coming from in terms of like, yes. this is this is a male a male competitive environment. Mm -hmm. It's not to say women can't be in it. I think it's just, you start to, you're starting to see more women who are in their masculine frame go into that environment. Yeah. I feel like when it starts disturbing or disrupting my time or day, it pisses me off. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And it's just like, I think it's across the years of seeing it, right? Because like I said, bro, from PE weightlifting, right? When I first learned what a chest press is, what squats are and all this stuff. And you would go to 24 hour fitness after school. You'd be like, wow, dude, this, this whole place is filled with tea, <laughs> right? Just tea. Tea. And then we had black tea after, but like <laughs> it's, and then to see it decline, 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 decline. And now we're like all into this, like equinox bougie shit and like inverted culture bro right that's that's a symptom of inverted culture and in the, and then everybody's now seeking motivation through videos like we're not even seeking motivation through others right because you go to the gym and it's all women all right so who are you going to talk to women hey so what are you working out today legs ah, 220 ah, you know every male in there has the capacity to like get to 500 if they needed to mm -hmm. it's just a different scale yeah Home gym, man. I'm telling you, nothing mm -hmm. knocks the home gym. Yeah, let's get home first. You don't have to travel <laughs> anywhere. Wake up at like that's, six in the morning. It's very true. I hope someone out there shares that perspective. It's just something to think about, you know, because it's another piece of pattern recognition. Yeah. Something is happening and it, it's happening everywhere. One example is just the gym, right? My hobbies are being interfered with. Like, what are some manly hobbies you can think of? Contractor. Sure. Is that a hobby? More like a job. Did you know that three of my- Hobby for some people. Yeah. Three of my neighbors are like into <laughs> machining, woodworking, and doing all this stuff. I mean, it's sick. But then if it starts becoming into like everybody just does every activity and we pretend like we all just love it. <clears throat> I feel like someone's lying somewhere. Always. Yeah. You get me? Yeah. Trends. So what happens? I think it's a, I think it's a net positive. It is a net positive because it's helped us. It's a lot. annoying for for the, like like I said, there's yeah. pros and cons yeah. to everything. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because without the gym, people wouldn't have learned about the immune system. Yeah. Go to the gym, John. Go to the gym, John. Go to the fucking gym, John. Yeah, That's bro. What say. That's what I'm saying. But I like that analogy you said with uh, the whole department store. Yeah, I mean, right. what, 70, maybe 80% of the of Nordstrom specifically yeah. is just made for women? And who do you think home goods is made for? Like, it's That's just all women. Yeah. Joanne. <laughs> yeah. It's probably 95% women. Joanne. <laughs> I mean, we've been there. Joanne, you just walk in, it's just like, it's 
tall women. And you're like, what am I doing here? Almost. Yeah. Right. So funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah, now we have gender freaking neutral bathrooms. Well, you start to see a lot more of it. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about this, but it's okay. I mean, I appreciate all kinds of um, art and effort and all this stuff. But no matter what, with male and female, you're always going to have to filter through BS. Yeah. And lies and deception and manipulation. But we can find the good. Yeah. We can always find the good. Speaking of BS, got to head to the restroom soon, so. Oh, for sure. <laughs> well, since everything is good, you know what's even better? This episode right here. Episode number 168. Go ahead oh, and baby. follow us. Um, we are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major streaming platforms. Go ahead and follow us there. Give us a five-star review. We're also available on YouTube at the 2 a.m. podcast. So do not miss a chance to subscribe. Special guest coming Wednesday. Mm -hmm. The one and only. Nobody is ready for that. It's going to be one of the funniest episodes we've had. Yeah. So anyway, guys, stay tuned. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Peace.